Hello everyone and welcome to our final week of the course where we'll be going over deficit spending and public debt. Before we jump into the material, there are two administrative items that I quickly wanted to go over. The first one is our final exam. I have now completed our final exam and anticipate that that will be available to take later today. It consists of 50 multiple choice questions, will be taken in Pearson My Econ Lab, and we'll cover the material from chapter one of our course all the way out to chapter 14. So make sure you're taking the time now to go over your homework, to go over the lectures, and to go over that practice exam that I posted last week. However, do not procrastinate taking this final exam. I, under no circumstances, can extend the final exam past December 15th. And that is because I have deadlines that I need to keep to post your final grades. The second thing I wanted to go over was our final project. That will be due at the same time as our final exam. Please, please, please reach out to me between now and December 15th with any questions that you might have in regard to that final project. All right, let's jump right into the material from chapter 14. There's three main concepts that the text is going to go over for this chapter, and that's going to be a balanced budget, surplus spending, and deficit spending. Let's start with this idea and concept of a balanced budget. A balanced budget is one where the anticipated taxes, revenue, and fees for a given year do not exceed the amount that the government spends in that given year. It's a balanced budget. Every single state in the United States, with the exception of Vermont, which might be a good Jeopardy question in the future, has in their constitution a requirement to have a balanced budget. That is not the case for cities in the United States, and it's not the case, certainly, for our federal government. The second concept is this idea of a surplus budget. And the idea of a surplus budget is we have our anticipated taxes, our anticipated revenue, and our anticipated fees for a given year. And the government is then going to come in and actually spend less than that in a given year. Utah has historically done this in order to have a rainy day fund set and ready to prepare for economic or natural disasters. And in a few years during the Clinton administration, the federal government actually ran a surplus budget. The third concept from this chapter is the idea of deficit spending and a deficit budget. And the idea of this is we have our anticipated taxes for a given year, we have our anticipated revenue from other sources, and our anticipated fees that we'll collect and the government is then going to spend more than that anticipated level. And the reason they can do this is this idea of issuance of debt through bonds. And historically, with the exception of those few years we talked about earlier, the federal government has been running a deficit year after year after year. And they do this for two reasons. The first is the party in power feels like that their concepts and their agenda that they want to push forward is a better use of money than the opposing party. So they're going to use as much funds as they can and then some in deficit spending to push that agenda. The second reason, which is related to the first, is political parties' power in the United States has historically been very, very, very cyclical. Meaning, if for four years Democrats are in power, we can usually anticipate the next four years Republicans will be in power. And that cycle will continue and continue. 
Because of that, the party that's currently in power want to reduce the spending power of the next four years. And they do that by getting as much deficit spending as they can. Unfortunately, that's always the incentive of the party in power, regardless of if it's Democrats or Republicans. Those are the main concepts within chapter 14. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Because this is the final week, though, I traditionally like to go over a few questions from our final exam to reward those individuals who watch these lectures diligently. So let me go through and randomly pick a few questions here. We'll go through the answers. First question I picked here is inflation is the result of what? And the correct answer is a sustained increase in the average price of goods and services. There's another random question here. The U.S. income tax is an example of blank. And the U.S. income tax is, of course, a progressive tax. Next question here, coming up quickly. Suppose it is anticipated that the government will collect $17 trillion in taxes and spends $8 trillion on the budget this year. This is an example of a, well, we just learned it this week, a budget surplus. That one comes from chapter 14, a budget surplus. Last one we'll go over. To assist those in need and stimulate the economy in the wake of COVID-19, stimulus payments were made to some Americans who met income thresholds. This action is best classified in economics as a transfer payment is going to be the answer of that question. I hope that gives you a taste of what type of questions you can expect as you take the final and hopefully provide you a little bit of an ease that these questions aren't meant to trick you, but rather reward you for getting to know the material of our course. I wish you the best of luck on our final project. I wish you the best of luck on our final exam. I'll go ahead and post some contact information for my LinkedIn if you'd like to stay in touch moving forward, and we will talk soon. Thanks.